Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. This week, we are going to talk about my space and the many revisions that I've been through. Let's get started. Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke, and I love bringing you ways to organize, declutter, do DIYs, upcycles, and anything crafty. I was about seven years old when I had my first little craft space. My parents were kind enough to give me a desk in my room and I loved finding scraps of things that I could make into items. As soon as I got my very first apartment, there was a tiny back porch with a water heater and a little closet. And that closet was filled with suitcases so that I would have a craft kit that I could roll out to my dining room table and then put back away. It was years later before I finally had a craft space that I could call my own, but I want to show you just the revisions that have happened here in the home that I've been living in for nine years. So often I hear people who are upset with themselves because they have this craft space and it hasn't stayed organized for them. It hasn't stayed neat and tidy or they are just frustrated because it was once beautiful and they've lost control of it. I am here to tell you, even though I've said it before, craft spaces are always evolving. They are a breathing, living organism. And because of that, they're always going to be adapting to what it is you're doing right now. So let's take a look at how my space first started and see how it's evolved over the years. Now, I do want to warn you, there will be some motion in these videos. So if you do have any sensitivity to motion, please fast forward to the time stamped here. Even though we moved into my house in 2013, it was 2014 that I finally created this play space for the kids. It was wonderful for them to go outside and play, have all of their toys out here, and because they shared a small room, it prevented that space from getting overwhelmed and messy. I tried to make it as cute as I could. My friend Carrie gave me these cute little hanging down plastic circles that just divided the space, and I could have this corner here for my crafting and still be outside with them, and I had a bench so they could sit and join me. Right around 2015 is when I really started getting into my home organizing business. I was doing it while still working full time and that was called the Clutter Fairy. I loved doing that and my little crafting space started doubling as an office as well as a space to do my crafting and my business. In 2018 though, I really stepped up what my space looked like because I was doing YouTube videos and I wanted that aesthetic that was going to be appealing in videos. Then 2019 rolled around and we had quite a storm. <laughs> my garage had already flooded a few times, but this was by far the worst. And my sweet little space that I was so excited and proud of was just ruined. I lost furniture, I lost rugs, and even though I had put in this little cement berm to keep the rain from coming in, it turns out that wasn't the main cause. So as you can see here, this rug is about an inch and a half under water and we had to use a pump to get all of the water out of the space. The root problem was the foundation had completely eroded underneath so water would well up through the crack and fill it. So my dear sweet cousin's husband came over and fixed as much as he could so that my garage wouldn't flood. Since everything had to come out of the garage anyway, my kids were a little bit older. This was about the time I thought, okay, let's give the kids their own spaces. So I abandoned my bedroom. I gave each of my kids one of the bedrooms so they would have their own space. And in doing so, the little play area that was in the front of my garage wasn't needed anymore. So I took it over as my craft space and oh my gosh, what a difference. If you're interested in seeing that, I have the garage turned craft area video and I'll have that linked below. Then in 2021, I decided to expand my space. So I had to disassemble all of the bookcases that were creating the faux walls to create my craft room. And I was still taking the provisions just in case it ever flooded again. So everything was up on two by fours 
because after losing so much the first time, I wasn't going to have it happen again. Since then, my space has changed just a few times. I've done the black and white. I did the pink with the florals. Last fall, I think, is when I decided on the faux wood, and I really did love that, but I wanted to change it up again. So it was time to take everything off the shelves, and this is always a good time for me to refresh and see what I'm really using and eliminate those things that I'm not. By taking off the shelves, this was such a quick thing. When I initially put up the paper, I had indicated how easy it would be to remove, and I want to show you how truly easy it was. Because I use removable spray adhesive, there was one little spot that stuck, but for the most part, all I had to do was take the scraper and wedge between the paper and the back of my bookcase, and now I can roll this up and use it again when I'm ready to change. And you guys know me, I'll change it around again. I always take this opportunity to clean everything thoroughly. And something I like to do is switch the shelves. So whatever was the top, I'll flip so it's the bottom side. What this does is over time, as you've got things on those shelves, the weight will start to bow them a little bit. By flipping them over about every six months, I've been able to extend the life of these melamine shelves because the weight is always being flipped over so those shelves are staying flat. If you have a bookcase where those shelves are starting to bow, do yourself a favor, take everything off and flip it. For the first few days, things are gonna be up higher in the middle, but eventually it'll settle down to level again. And as they start to go the other way, just flip those shelves again. Now, I personally always start with the focal point. It's the item that I want seen the most. It's what allows me to decorate all around it. And in this case, it was my silver play button. The other thing I wanted to reintroduce was I had shown how to add a small shelf with just two short risers and then a longer piece of wood that's the same length or width as your bookcase, but I have a shallow shelf that allows me to put my small little containers and then have my large jars underneath it. So I wanted to bring that out and use it again. From this point, I just start putting things back in and I will play with the layout of things. And if I don't like it, you guys, it is okay to change your mind. While you're putting this together, you will change things again and then change it again <laughs> and change it again. And that is so normal. So if you are playing with the layout of your space, don't be afraid to keep moving things around walk away, come back and look at it with a fresh eye. One of the things that I've been meaning to update for a long time are my labels. I had used photo paper and because my space is in the garage, the paper had started to warp and wrinkle just a little bit. So I wanted to refresh all of my labels and put new ones out. I created this template and I've got this as a download for you that's absolutely free. You can go through and change the fonts to fit your aesthetic, but once I decided on mine, I was ready to label every single item I have. Just print them on whatever white paper or cardstock that you have. And I also made larger cutouts with my Cricut that were bigger than the actual printed label so that I could layer these. I then sat down with some good music and I spent about 20 minutes and I just hand cut out every one of the printed labels. If you are better at the Cricut than I am, go ahead and let that cut it out for you. But it only took me about 20 minutes and I had the background of polka dots and solid black to go behind my labels. I was also excited to bring out my Xyron sticker maker. I haven't used that in a while. Then it was as easy as sticking those stickers right to the background that I wanted them attached to. This was so quick. I also chose to do a matte paper so they won't reflect when I'm filming. So here is the reveal, at least for this season, you know I'm going to change things. But my garage is my favorite sanctuary. I love coming through and seeing this space. The black and white really pops again. It's nice and bright. I'm undecided about that little backdrop area for Annie's. I'm actually not working with them anymore, so I can do whatever I want with that space, but for right now, I still like the wood grain behind it. 
This little overflow area stayed mostly the same, but I did put the black and white paper in the background. I also still really love my pegboard. I just took a few things out that weren't really fitting in there. And I also changed what's holding all of my tapes so that it would look a little bit less busy. I think the main area that I worked on was my card making and where my friend mail is. This is what I do the most in my garage now. So I wanted to have all of those supplies readily available and looking a little bit less cluttered. By moving out those things that were just kind of causing me to feel like it was an overwhelmed space, uh, it looks a little more cohesive to me. I personally like having a lot of visual things out. I know this is really busy for some people, but for me, it makes me feel inspired and it has all of the supplies that I need when I'm working in this space. I don't think I'll ever get rid of my scrapbook organizer. That is one of the most efficient things for me, but I love having my jars out again with the smaller things above it with this mini shelf. It's just one of my favorite little decor things. But this is where I sit and I craft the most. I love sitting there and this is what I see when I'm crafting. Here's the mirror for me to see. This used to be really helpful when I was filming with Annie's, but when I'm looking across the way, here is my office space where I do my editing, where I do my business things for my organizing company. So I want that to look nice, but I also like how it ties together with the rest of the space so that the entire area looks cohesive. And again, if I want to change it, it's so easy to just clear these shelves, change the background, change what's on them, and by adjusting the shelves, I can always accommodate whatever it is I'm putting on there. And I absolutely love having my tools just to my immediate left for when I need them as I am crafting. Now the next thing I have to work on is looming overhead all of the time. All of those toys that were in this space initially, I've kept just in case I have grandbabies someday. But you guys, I've got to get rid of it. <laughs> I've kept so much. Please leave me comments if you have kept things from your kids. I kept their Build-A-Bears. I kept their Legos. I kept their dollhouse things. I kept all of their Barbies. And they used to play with these toys called Monster High Dolls. I think they were a flash in the pan. It became really popular and now I don't see them at all but I kept them all because it was unique and I thought it would be fun to pull out someday once I have grandkids, if I have grandkids. But the truth is, if I am moving into that RV the way that I'm talking about and traveling, where is that all going to go? And I'm pointing up because it's literally up in my loft right here in my garage. So I have to start pulling these things out, going through them and being really honest about how much I need to keep. While it would be amazing to have a whole play area full of toys, if I have little boy grandchildren, they're probably not going to want to play with those things, but who knows, maybe they will. So I have to be honest with that. So as you're going through your space, I want you to be aware that changes happen. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to have five, six, seven, 12 resurrections of your space because that is the natural evolution of what we do. I got rid of beading. I've mostly gotten rid of all of my jewelry making because they weren't things that I was doing anymore. I got rid of a lot of the wooden block things that I was doing for a while there. I kept just a few pieces, but I let the rest go. So right now I have this big pile of donations and I'm trying to decide where I want them to go. I love working with the Disabled Artists Foundation. They are a wonderful resource, but sometimes it's a little cost prohibitive for me to send big, big boxes to them. So I like working with places like senior centers or local schools for the disabled adults because they can really use these things for those days when they're doing crafting and projects. So check with your local resources. And if you have small supplies, consider sending them to the Disabled Artists Foundation. I have their information down in the description below, as well as the link to my website where you can get those labels for free. 
I am able to do these videos and allow these downloads because of my patrons. So a huge thank you to them for allowing me to make these videos. Their support is unbelievably helpful, but so is yours in watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting to these videos. So if you have time to do so today, please do one of those and that lets me know that you're also enjoying these videos. I will see you guys in just a few days. I don't think I'm tackling those toys anytime soon, but you know I'll have another idea coming out in just a few days, so I will see you then. Bye.